five mistakes men make when it comes to cologne. Gentlemen, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about fragrance. I'm going to talk about controlling the way that you smell so that you can control your image. Now, think about it. You already care about the way you smell. You're using deodorant, right? Why do you use deodorant? Because you don't want to smell bad. Guys, that's only one part of the coin though. Think of the other side of the coin. What happened if you smell good? What would happen if you had a signature scent? What would happen if you could put on a fragrance and it would make you feel better? In this video, guys, I'm going to talk about how to use fragrance, how do you smell, how do you scent to your advantage. Mistake number one, not using fragrance at all. Guys, 80% of men do not use fragrance on a regular basis. A smaller percentage of that don't even use it at all. But the point is, if you're not using fragrance, you're really, you're really missing out because there are two powerful effects, how it affects you and how it affects others. First off, let's talk about how it affects you. Numerous studies out there that have shown that wearing a fragrance and sometimes certain fragrances can calm you down, can make you feel better, can build up your confidence. Now let's talk about how it affects others. Let's talk about the exact opposite. If you were to go, you know, go into the trash and cover yourself with trash, you would smell pretty darn bad. How would that affect? Well, it would have a negative effect on others. But whenever you have a good smell, one that is discovered, people are going to remember you more. There's going to be a signature scent, something about you, something positive. When you control the way that you smell, you can have a very positive effect on others. Mistake number two, a man does not trust his own ability to choose his own fragrance. Now, men have that ability to find a fragrance, to identify one that is going to naturally enhance your natural smell. Makes sense? But the problem is most of us receive fragrances as gifts or when we go out there, we try it one time at the department store, we buy a 50 ml bottle, which is enough for a year, we bring it home and what happens? We realize, nah, I didn't like the middle note, didn't like the base note, and it's not something that really inspires me. I don't know what it is, but I really wish I would have tried something else, but I spent all that money or my wife spent all that money, gave it to me as a gift. It sits there right there. So you wear it on special occasions when she asks you to or when you realize you got to wear something, but you're never inspired by it. Guys, the problem with that is that you basically are not going out there. You're not finding a fragrance which you're going to love and it's just going to make you feel great. And that's why I'm really excited to introduce you to Scentbird. So Scentbird sent me some samples. There are over 450 designer fragrances that you can choose from and you get to choose the fragrance delivered right to your door. You get to put them in the order. These are the ones I went with, Burberry London, uh, Bulgari and then declaration. I also went with the Oxford Blue. They recommended this and I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't know what to expect, loved it. And I based it off of, okay, they've got a cool review system, but there's enough here, 0.27 ounces, eight milliliters for 120 sprays. And like I said, over 450 designer fragrances to choose from. Guys delivered right to your door for $14.95, an awesome deal. But here's the thing is that every month you get a different fragrance and this is key because you need to look at various samples. You need to date these fragrances before you say, you know what, this one is really good. I'm going to go out there and buy a 50 ml bottle. I'm going to buy a 100 ml bottle because I want to wear this all the time. I want this to be my signature scent. And that's the key guys is discovery. Taking the time to find the fragrance which is going to naturally enhance your natural smell and every time you wear it, you're going to just feel great. Mistake number three applying the fragrance incorrectly. So, have you ever seen a guy do this? Takes the fragrance, maybe you've done it yourself, you spray it right in front of yourself and you walk into it. Guys, do not waste fragrance like that. You want to directly apply it to your body, preferably when you're right outside of the shower. The key areas and my favorites are going to be the chest, the neck and the inside of the arm from the wrist maybe up to the forearm. Apply one spray when you're first starting off and knowing that, okay, I can always apply more and you're, you know, a few hours later, maybe eight hours later, depending on the strength of the fragrance, you actually can apply it again. But what you don't want to do is apply too much and overwhelm those in the room. So start off with one spray and apply it to areas where it can be discovered, not necessarily announced and avoid that fragrance cloud. Also, when you spray it on various parts of the body, don't take other parts of the body and rub it together. Does anyone know what that's called whenever you do that? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear who knows what that is, you know, and why you need to avoid it. But guys, I've got an entire infographic I'll link to down in the notes. Mistake number four, using too much. Two parts of this equation. 
One depends on how many sprays you apply. The other part is how powerful of a fragrance you're actually using. So let's talk about the number of applications. Whenever I'm starting off with a new fragrance, I apply one application. If it's really weak, then maybe four hours, six hours later, I will apply it again. And that's what's really nice about having small applicators you can take with you. Uh, Some people actually, when they're going to go out that evening, they'll reapply again. So three to four times a day, but not four times at once because what happens then is all of a sudden you're announcing your fragrance instead of allowing it to be discovered. Me personally, I like it whenever my wife will come up close, my my daughters, you know, my give my son a hug, he'll be able to smell something. But if you're if you're an arm's length away, you're not gonna really be able to smell me. Guys, also be attuned that some people they're just they don't want to smell you. They understand some people it gives them a headache. So be aware of that and keep it under wraps. Also, like I pointed out, understand there's toilet that there is cologne and that there is perfume. Perfume is going to be the strongest and that's about a 20% concentration while on the other end, cologne and oftentimes men, we think everything's a cologne, but cologne is going to be the weakest. We're talking about a two to 4% uh, concentration. Toilet falls in the middle about a 10% concentration. So when you think about that, if something is marked as toilet, understand it's going to be a little bit stronger than if you're used to wearing a cologne. Uh, But if you're going to get something that is a perfume and yes, men can wear perfumes, understand that that's going to be strong. You definitely want to start off with one spray. Mistake number five, not storing your fragrance appropriately. Understand no fragrance is going to last forever. If you take care of a fragrance and you store it appropriately, it can last for up to a few years. Past that, it's probably going to degrade. But you can have a fragrance degrade very quickly if you overexpose it to sunlight and if you expose it to a wide range of temperatures in a short amount of time. So here in Wisconsin, we get down to negative 30 in the winter up to 90 degrees in the summer. That's a 120 degree range. If I stored a fragrance in my vehicle or maybe out in a shed or in an area where it's going to be exposed to that wide range, then it is going to degrade. In addition, you don't want to put it up on a windowsill. You don't want to have it in a place where it's exposed to a lot of light. What's going to happen? That light's going to go into the fragrance and it's going to cause it to break down. It's not going to smell the same very soon. So keep it in a dark place where basically you're only going to be opening it and exposing it to light whenever you're using the fragrance. All right, gentlemen, that's it. Now, I want to hear from you down in the comments below. I want to know what is your favorite fragrance? What is it about that fragrance that you just love? And if you don't have a fragrance you love, if you don't have a signature scent, gentlemen, I want you to go check out Scentbird. The reason being, and the reason I was so excited to work with this company is that shop cologne tool because that shop cologne tool allows you to go in there and look at scents by type, look at fragrances based off the style, look at fragrances based off the occasion, enter that information. They give you different choices and then you can actually have the samples sent right to your door so that you can try them so that you can find the fragrance that is going to just enhance your natural smell, make you feel great. And at the end of the day, guys, you want to be able to use fragrance as a tool, as a weapon, to be able to get what you want out of life and to feel more confident and to feel better about yourself. That's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.